The Israeli military has surrounded Gaza City. Hamas fighters are laying IEDs on top of Israeli tanks by hand. And Hezbollah may have a new air defense capability thanks to their friends in Russia. What's going on, everyone? Let's take a look at some updates as it relates to the ongoing war between Israel and Hamas. I'm recording this at 7.30 a.m. Central on Friday, November 3rd, 2023. Overnight, Israel says that their ongoing operations in Gaza resulted in the death of 130 Hamas terrorists. They say that one of those was Mostaba Delol, the commander of the Zabra Tel El Hua Battalion. Uh, the Gaza Health Ministry, with information put out through Al Jazeera, says that 9,227 Palestinians have so far been killed during the Israeli air raids over Gaza, adding that 32,500 Palestinians have been wounded. And they say these numbers include 3,826 children and 2,405 women that have been killed since October 7th. And moving on to the ground operation being conducted by Israel, looking at a map presented here by War Mapper on Twitter. You can see that Israeli defense forces have reached the sea. They've encircled Gaza City uh, to the south. So they're already cut off to the north and the east. Uh, and now Israel has cut off any route out of Gaza City to the south. The IDF says that throughout these operations, they are targeting Hamas terrorist infrastructure as well as leaders within the organization. The IDF put out a video showing, you know, uncovering a couple tunnels in the area. And, and we haven't really seen any footage from down inside of those tunnel networks underground quite yet. But every step the IDF is taking as they push further into Gaza, they're they're bypassing these tunnels. They're going over these. It's just seeing what the IDF has cleared on the surface does not indicate that the entire area is yet secured. There's tunnels all across Gaza that are going to take weeks, months, maybe longer to fully clear out of these Hamas fighters. Now, Hamas says that they conducted one counterattack against Israeli forces that resulted in the destruction of six Israeli tanks, two armored personnel carriers, and one bulldozer. Israeli casualties are still a little hit or miss, trying to understand what those look like. The last I've seen is still 18 total Israeli soldiers killed since the ground invasion kicked off in Gaza. That number is not updated since yesterday. A likely reason for the delay is similar to how we do this in the United States. Uh, there is a pause to wait for the families to be notified before that information is made public. Now, Hamas released a pretty unique video yesterday, and we'll play it here and walk through it. It was... Uh, Hamas terrorists coming out of a tunnel, a uh, camouflage tunnel here, within very close range of Israeli armor. I mean, 10 meters away, in broad daylight, not in an urban setting. This is a little bit on the outskirts of a city. Uh, and these guys, they run out from behind cover. It doesn't look like there's any suppressive fire. They run out beside this Israeli tank. You can see a couple other armored vehicles, a couple other tanks in the background. And they lay an IED, a unidirectional IED, on top of the tank, risking their life. To, to, to destroy this one tank, turn around and run back, tank detonates, and or the, the IED detonates, likely destroying the tank, uh, and then these fighters do fire a couple RPGs, uh, potentially destroying another tank, maybe the same one, uh, and then they escape. Not clear if all of these guys survived, but at least enough to upload this video. I mean, it was, was made public. Now, I do think it's possible that before October 7th, Hamas was underestimated. I think for most people all around the world, seeing what they're able to pull off on October 7th, moving into Israeli territory, massacring you know, upwards of 1,400 Israeli civilians. I think the underestimation kind of went away at that point, seeing what Hamas was actually capable of. But for anybody still on the fence, I give you this video. Right? You've got Hamas fighters in broad daylight running up and, and placing explosive devices on Israeli tanks and then living to fight another day. They're motivated and capable. And the Israeli military, based off some of these videos, appear to be getting a baptism by fire. I mean, this was something called out early in the Russian war against Ukraine, where Ukrainian anti-tank teams were able to move up to 10, 15 meters away from some of these Russian tanks and knock them out one at a time. And the question was raised, where is the supporting infantry? Where are the drones overhead? Where's the aerial observation to prevent these anti-tank teams from creeping right up inside of the blind spot of the Russian armor? Same question can be asked right now. Where is the Israeli infantry? Where is the drones? Where is the overhead cover to identify these anti-tank teams 10, 15 meters away from the tanks during combat operations? I'm sure the Israeli military will learn and adapt and, and continue on, but you know this is going to be a very tough, very bloody fight. Now to the north in Lebanon, Hezbollah picked up their attacks pretty significantly yesterday. 
uh, hitting supposedly 19 different points across the border near simultaneously. As a response, of course, as we've seen over the past couple weeks, Israel responded, struck multiple Hezbollah targets, and news came out that the 56th Hezbollah fighter was killed during these ongoing engagements with Israel. Now, sticking with Hezbollah for a minute, the Wall Street Journal put out a report that the Russian Wagner Group may be in the works to send SA-22s to Hezbollah. So the SA-22, also known as the Pantsir, is an air defense system, uh, can fire surface-to-air guided missiles, has dual 30-millimeter cannons. Uh, those missiles, depending on the model and variant, can have a range out to 18 kilometers with a 15-kilometer max altitude. Now, the Hezbollah air defense capabilities are pretty murky. So we know that Hezbollah has man pads, man portable air defense systems, the shoulder fired, like stingers, things like that, uh, as well as air defense cannons, ZSUs. Um, in terms of air defense missiles, surface to air missile systems, there's a lot of speculation there. Uh, there have been rumors that Hezbollah has had in the past SA-2s, SA-8s, SA-17s, and even this Pantsir, the SA-22. The challenge is, is whenever uh, those are confirmed, Israel tends to strike and destroy them whether they're in Syria transiting to Lebanon or in Lebanon themselves. So it's possible the SA-22 is just adding to the Hezbollah inventory and they already have these capabilities, or it could be a new capability on top of what they already have. But either way, SA-22, should that materialize, should that end up in Lebanon uh, with Hezbollah forces, that will pose a pretty significant threat to Israeli aircraft operating in and around their northern border. Now shifting to the south, uh, yesterday, Israel put out that their F-35 intercepted a cruise missile headed from the south-southeast direction, which is Yemen and the Houthis. Remember a couple days ago, the Houthis came out, didn't necessarily declare that they are entering the war, just saying we're going to keep attacking Israel as much as we'd like. Uh, so thank you to Oryx, the website, uh, the blog, for putting together some of these images here that I was able to pull. But uh, the Houthis have a pretty substantial military inventory, and I think at some point it's worth diving into uh, everything that they have in their arsenal, most of it supplied uh, from Iran. But in the Houthi arsenal, they do have what are called the Quds 351, the Quds 2, and the Quds 3 cruise missiles. It's hard to tell based off of the video uh, which model was fired, but either way, the Houthis do have the ability to launch cruise missiles from Yemen that could strike inside of Israeli territory. Now, shifting back home to the United States, uh, the U.S. House approved $14.5 billion in military aid to Israel, but that is likely to go nowhere. So the reason that's likely to get shut down is what was put forward in the House is exclusively Israel aid. They stripped out any military aid for Ukraine, and they tied that $14.5 billion to domestic spending cuts, mostly uh, in and around the IRS. Now, this storyline is kind of being presented as U.S. aid to Israel and the challenges they're going to have with that. But that's not really the big piece here. The big piece here is that Ukraine aid continues to be kind of stalled in the United States. So, yes, Israel would like more munitions, more GPS-guided bombs, more artillery rounds, more air defense missiles. They'll take whatever we can give them, right? I'm, they're, they're going to use it. They are not in as much of a need right now as Ukraine is. So the Israel aid getting held up for a couple days, a couple weeks, even a couple months, realistically, at this point, Israel's going to be just fine. They've got a pretty substantial arsenal, especially when they're just dealing with Hamas and maybe a little bit of Hezbollah in the north. If the war were to escalate, it's a different story. But Ukraine needs a lot of things, and they need a lot of things right now. So again, the focus, uh, at least in some of these articles, is how the Israel aid gets stopped. To me, the bigger picture is how the Ukraine aid was stripped out, and Ukraine is going to have to wait even longer for additional funding for their war. But that's all I got for now. Of course, if interested in national security subjects, be sure to check out the sit reps I put out on Substack. Link is in the description below. Seven to 10 of the top articles each week, along with a few podcast recommendations. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.